Okay, so today we are gonna be talking about Chris Watts' mother, Cindy Watts' new book. I'm gonna be telling you guys some of the things that she said in her book that I thought was interesting or whatever. And I'm also going to be telling you guys about the weird things that's been going on in my house ever since I've been diving deeper into this Chris Watts case. You guys know I haven't really wanted to talk about it because it kind of freaks me out, but today I'm gonna tell you. Just so you guys know, this video is only to report on the news, talk about a public book that is out there, and for entertainment purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everyone in your everyday life, at your work, in your home, and as well in the comment section down down below and let's get into it. Good morning my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe Stick around, take a chance on hearing some things that I have to say, and if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. So no, I did not buy the Cindy Watts book, but I did find it online. I mean, there's it's, it's everywhere, you guys can see and I've gone over it multiple times and I definitely have some opinions. First, we will get into the weird things that's been going on in my house. Now, I've been wanting to tell you guys about this, but I kept wanting to wait until I wasn't home alone because it just creeps me out. But uh, anytime that I'm not home alone, the house is like loud and I can't get into it, so I am going to bite the bullet and go for it today. First thing is, I wanna tell you guys that in my life, I have had like maybe, you know, spooky things happen, you know, things that could be questionable, paranormal, paranormal, whatever you wanna call it. You guys know my spiritual beliefs. I do believe in God, Jesus, all of that good, beautiful, lovely stuff there. You guys also know, if you're if you're not new here, that no matter what your beliefs are, I love you and I respect you and, and that's it. But with my beliefs, I definitely, believe in the spiritual realm. I definitely believe in evil forces and stuff like that. Now, what happened was, when I started diving into this Chris Watts case like deeper, more than just what you see on the news or whatever, I mean anything from like watching YouTube videos or whatever, when I am home alone, I would hear sounds in my house that I never heard. And I always got the chills watching videos or reading things about him, like constantly getting the chills. And that's not it, okay? We're gonna get into it too, but the thing about it is, Chris Watts claims that some force took over him. Now, I don't know if that's true or not because I'm not Chris Watts, and to be honest, he tells so many doggone lies, you can't keep up with it. Nobody really knows what's real or what's not. He's told so many different stories. I mean, we don't really no, you know, like it's like he says something that seems like it could make sense and be true and then he turns around and says something else that seems like it could make sense and be true and then he says something else and you've got so many stories, you're like, what, you know, what is it? You know, we have to make our own, I guess, decisions about it. But the last time when you guys watched my other Chris Watts videos and I told you that something weird was happening in my house, I'm gonna tell you guys what happened. I was getting ready to put Jaden to bed. And this night or this day, I was all in it. I filmed it, edited it. You know, and the thing about you guys may not realize is when you do YouTube, right? A lot of people think, ah, YouTube, I can do that, which you can. I mean, anybody can do YouTube. But it's not just you film a video, pop it up, okay? You have to think about the concept or, or the topic, right? So we'll say Chris Watts. I have to think about Chris Watts, okay? Then I have to watch videos or read articles or read stuff, okay? And gather my information, write it down, make cliff notes if, if I wanna write down things that I don't wanna forget, because Lord knows I'm super forgetful. And then I have to film the video, right? So then that takes time. Then I have to sit in front of a computer listening to myself talk about this subject for eight hours, whatever it takes that day, over and over and over again. So it's not, so you so you literally on a day that I've done Chris Watts, I'm spending eight whatever hours just thinking about it and hearing it and getting the chills and getting these weird vibes. 
Well, this particular day was really, really creepy, you guys. And I went, I, I was putting Jaden to bed and I went into the garage. And when I went into the garage, when I turned the light on, way over by the garage was this big black shadowy, I don't wanna say a dark force cause I don't know if that's too much or whatever, but this big black shadowy thing and it like moved under the boxes really quick. And the thing is, oh man, I got chills all down my legs thinking about it. I didn't see the shadowy force or whatever it was when the light was off. It was when I turned the light on, okay? Oh, you guys. I stood there for a minute and I just looked. I kind of stood up on my tippy toes to see if I, cause I was looking for something that would have made it make sense. And so I turned the light off. I did not go into the garage and I locked the door. So I'm like literally in my mind trying to rationalize what this could be, what I saw, whatever. Later on, I got Jaden in my bed cause he sleeps with me, but sometimes he goes to sleep in his bed. If he has to go to bed at a certain time, he goes to sleep in his bed and then I pick him up, carry him into the bed with me because if it's just he and I here, I don't want him on one side of the house and me on the other, even though we've got tons of cameras, full alarm system, the whole nine, I still want him sleeping with me. So I moved him into the other side of the house into my bed and in the kitchen, I saw another or the same big black shadow thing and I, it freaked me out, you guys. It did. And I, you know, I started praying. I prayed, 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 prayed. I was singing songs, trying to fill my house full of, you know, the good aura and, and the spirits that I believe. The next day or a couple, well, I kept thinking about it. Like, what could that, like, this is so weird. Like, I've never personally seen something like this before. I've seen other creepy things, like I've told you guys, and I've seen other things and I've heard sounds and I've been in really creepy places, but nothing like this. And, you know, I kept thinking about it. So I reached out to a lady that is like high in the church. I don't know if that would be the word. Like she's a very spirit filled woman. And I told her about it because I was like, this is weird. Like this is like, I this is, you know, whatever. I was like, something about this case, I cannot tell if it's something trying to stop me from talking about it because I should be talking about it or if I should not be talking about it and I'm inviting something into my own home. So we talked about it a lot, prayed about it, and been really trying to do whatever, okay? So that's why I have not, that's why I never bought the book, although I was planning on buying the book because I did not want to bring anything else into my home. So yes, since then, I have not really done anything on the Chris Watts case. I was trying to watch videos a couple nights ago on YouTube of other people that had the book and maybe just hear their opinion and see what they had to say because I looked it up on Amazon. The book is for sale on Amazon and I was reading the reviews and the reviews are horrible. So this particular night I figured, okay, I'll just watch some videos. So I was laying in the bed with Jaden. Jaden was asleep and you guys, I tell you as soon as I start watching these videos, the chills come back. I would hear little noises in my living room and you know, it could be anything. I'll be honest with you guys. It could be the fish tank doing something funny. It could be, you know, a tree limb falling or tapping a window or whatever. It could be something that makes logical sense, but it's so weird that every time I dive into this case, weird things start happening in my home. So, Alrighty, now that I've told you guys that, let me know what you think. If any of you guys had the same experiences or similar experiences, I would love to know <laughs> if I'm alone out here or, you know, whatever. So other than that, let's just get into this Cindy Watts book. Now I've watched interviews with Cindy Watts and you guys, I don't like to talk about nobody. Listen, at the end of the day, she is a mother who has lost her her son basically, and her daughter-in-law, no matter how she felt about her, and her grandchildren that came from her son, okay? And no matter who you are, if you are whatever type of personality type or any kind of mental illnesses that you may have, that's hard. That's hard for anybody. And I cannot imagine what she has gone through, what Shanann's family has gone through, what other people have gone through. Now, 
In this video, I'm gonna talk a lot about Cindy Watts. That does not mean that I don't feel sad for Shanann's family or for Shanann or for the kids. It's just that this video is gonna be about, you know, this, what she said and how I feel about it. So if you guys want me to talk about other aspects, let me know down below. But other than that, I'm gonna try to stay on topic because you guys know that I just, I veer off and I just ramble and I'm gonna try. I promise I'm gonna give it my best shot. So one of the things I thought was interesting was in this book she talked about her grieving process with Shanann and about how a lot of people were like upset that she was not basically and I'm paraphrasing everything here putting it all in my own words this is not exactly what she said but basically because she wasn't like on the news like crying about Shanann being killed and da 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 and she basically more or less was saying like she felt like she would be a hypocrite right she didn't feel like that with Shanann when she was on the earth so she didn't want to be one of those people that was like ooh, ooh, you know doing that online at the same time and i get that i understand that's still a little weird to me be honest with you guys but I, I i can understand what she is saying doesn't mean i agree with it but i get what she's trying to say with that part another thing i thought she was interesting was she was saying as a mother i cannot make this right i cannot make this right for chris i cannot make this right for the world because they are deemed like one of the most hated like, or if not the most hated family in america right now i, I i've heard that somewhere and I get what that is because like as a mother, and you guys know mothers, fathers, grandmas, papas, all y'all out there, we want when our children, especially when they're like really in something that's hurting them, we want to make it right for them, right? We want to fix it. We wish that we could take the pain away. And so I understood what she meant by that as well, that as a mother, I cannot make that right for him. Does that mean that I don't have my other opinions about if she should make it right or whatever? No, that, that doesn't mean that I don't have other opinions. But what I'm saying is I, I understand her. Another thing that she was very interesting that she was talking about with Shanann was that she said that Shanann was very open about her personal issues and that made Cindy uncomfortable, okay? She said that like immediately when she met Shanann, like um, Shanann was telling her like about how she was sick or she was divorced or you know, all of these different things and that Cindy is not like that. Cindy's a very private person that does not talk about her personal business or her struggles or whatever and that made Cindy feel uncomfortable. That again, I can understand because I am the person who is very open about what I'm going through, okay? I'm a private person about some things if it like affects other people if it's going to affect my children in a certain way or my husband or my grandmother or whatever those things I can be private about but when it comes to me I'm a very open person as well so I get Shanann wanting to rub up to or open up to her mother-in-law listen I'm a daughter-in-law myself, okay? And I really wish Cindy would have saw it that way instead of judging her because that kind of makes me feel like maybe from the beginning, Cindy just did not like Shanann. I mean, she was, she was dating her baby boy. And let me tell you right now, I have been in relationships with people whose mothers are like that. No matter how good you are, no matter what you do, whatever, you are not good enough for their baby boy. Some of y'all mamas out there are like that, okay? I love y'all, but you know you are. Listen, my mother-in-law, okay, although we are very, very close, I love her, I'd do anything for her. She could call me right now, I'd turn off this camera, go pick her up, whatever she needs. She, she, me and her talk every single day. I love her very much. But Jeremy is her baby boy, okay? And that, no matter how close me and her are, that is her baby boy, okay? And I, and I understand that and I respect that, okay? And that's her son and I'm a mom so I get it but I feel like Cindy you know like so what she wants to open up to you and tell you what she's going through so what that makes you a little bit uncomfortable I get it but still like that's her personality and I feel like you know that's her mother-in-law I know for me my mother-in-law I want to be so close to her and I am and I tell her dang near everything everything I'm going through, she gets to hear about it. Trust me, sometimes she probably don't want to because I'm a very dramatic and emotional type of person. But you know, like I kind of, I didn't like that she said that, but I understand that is her point of view. And some of y'all may be like that. Some of y'all may be like that. You don't like people telling you your personal business, but at the same time, that's, you know, I don't know. I was just like, so what? So what if she if she wanted to, to open up to you? You're her mother-in-law. She's trying to build a bond with you. She's trying to show you how much she trusts you. 
Anyways, child, let's move on to the next thing. Another thing that she was saying about Shanann was that Shanann, I guess, had that house built. She said it was like a half a million dollar home, was huge, had three formal dining rooms, had all of this expensive furniture and pieces, some pieces that were flown in from Italy and that Shanann really, like, more or less she was saying she was like a very materialistic person and that she liked nice things but that she did work hard for her things and I don't really see the problem with that either if she works hard and she wants to spend her money on the things that she likes and that uh, the house is beautiful and she wants to make it her own like I don't see a problem with that but she kept referring back to the point that like they're such simple people well I get that too because I'm I consider myself to be a simple person too, but you know, if Shanann, you know, wanted to have a big, beautiful home, a dream home, like what's the big deal with that? She was saying about how like when Shanann went to go have the house built, she supposedly took like, now this is all alleged, I don't know, this is just things that are in the book. She supposedly took a suitcase full of $20,000 and was like, here, here's the, you know, to show the builders that she was serious about it. I think that's incredible, honey. Go ahead, do your thing. Be a strong woman. Get your own. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't depend on nobody to have to get you something. Yes, if people that we love help us or can help us, that's great. But so what? I think that's incredible, honey. Take that, take that suitcase full of 20 stacks up there and say, I'm here and I ain't playing. Like, I think that's awesome, you know? But the thing about it though, you will find if you read the book, at the end of the book, you find out that they end up, uh, Shannon and Chris file bankruptcy, allegedly according to Cindy Watts. And uh, like, I guess all in the bankruptcy, it was like a bunch of trips because there's, she's saying that, you know, Shanann, because she was in this internet world, she was always taking these trips. They were, they were always going like, they'd go out of the country and take all of these vacations and like buy all of this stuff. And you know, had a Lexus and an Escalade and all of these like really nice expensive cars. But supposedly, according to the bankruptcy and the way that it kind of, she was insinuating is maybe she didn't really have all of this money and maybe she was really just going into debt. I don't really know what you know, that meant as far as in the book. I don't really know why she put that in there, like their financial things, unless she's just trying to paint this picture of who Shanann was. But, uh, so what? Things happen. People file bankruptcy sometimes. Sometimes things happen, you know, like that's life. She was also saying about how Shanann would always tell her or did tell her that she, you know, had been divorced before. So I guess, Chris was Shanann's second husband, and Shanann was always saying about how she put her husband through school and all of that stuff, so that's kind of a useless piece of information, but if you don't know, now you know. And then she was saying what made her very uncomfortable, or one of the things that made her very uncomfortable about Shanann was that Shanann would always like talk about Chris's appearance or talk down to him to his mom. And I can see how that would make her feel uncomfortable. If I did that to my mother-in-law, that would make her feel uncomfortable. I can see that if that's really what happened, we don't really know. But she was saying that Shanann was really fixated on looks and really talked about people's appearance a lot. So I kind of get the gist from the money, from the the house, from the trips, the materialistic things, from Shanann always being on social media and doing Facebook and stuff like that, and then talking about people's appearance, it kind of get the gist that she's trying to insinuate that Shanann was shallow, that she was a shallow human being. And look, this is how I look at it, you guys. People are different, right? I've got a different personality than you got a different personality. And I'm just a firm believer in we accept people for who they are as long as they are not hurting anybody or they're decent human beings or they take care of their children and they go to work. Like, who cares? Like, right? Like, that's just who they are. We got to quit trying to make people who we want them to be. We got to quit trying to make our family members and our friends and that, 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 that fit into our little box of who we expect them to be and just love them for who they are. Like I said, as long as they're not like hurting people or doing like, you know, whatever. Cindy also said that she felt like Chris was always looking for approval from Shanann. Well, like always trying to impress her, always trying to, you know, well, he was a passive aggressive guy, according to his mama. And that's unfortunately sometimes what a passive aggressive people do. I don't know if that's necessarily Shanann's fault. Like, I mean, me and my husband kind of do that with each other. We're always trying to, you know, 
do nice things for each other or make each other happy or make each other's life a little bit easier, right? Like, I don't really see what the big problem, I mean, maybe she saw things differently than what we know, but like all of these things that she kind of talked about Shanann that in my opinion in the book kind of tried to be turned to the negative. She also said that Chris bought her a $12,000 engagement ring and that she was basically shook by that. Like that is a down payment on a house or a car or whatever. And I don't know what to say about that. Like sometimes people are like that. And I think that if that's, you know, although I don't need a $12,000 engagement ring, as a matter of fact, even my engagement ring, I was shocked that he got me what he got me, you know what I'm saying? Because I would have never asked for something as beautiful as he got me and I'm so thankful. But you know, like if that's what she liked and he was willing to put in the work and do whatever it took, clear out his savings account or whatever and buy that for her, then that's, that's their business. If Chris was happy, I mean, but I guess at the end of the day, maybe he wasn't happy. See, it's all so confusing. The whole entire thing is so confusing. Cindy also kind of talked about like Shanann's like social media thing. And let me tell you guys something right now. There is a lot of people that even judge me, you know, family members or whatever that, you know, just kind of think like, oh, she loves her. Christina loves herself so much. She films herself talking, puts it on the internet. You know, people don't understand the magnitude of the internet nowadays. Like this is the way of the future. Like, Facebook, Instagram, this is literally, this is 2019, almost 2020. Like we gotta quit snubbing our noses to social media because we are forever evolving and social media is a huge part of that. So I think the fact that Shanann, which according to Chris in an interview, he said that she made more money than he did with her Thrive and her online stuff. Like, if she was killing the game and making good money and helping people get healthier, like, go off, do your thing. And being able to work from home and be with her kids, like, there is nothing wrong with that. There's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Cindy also tells a story in this book about how, like, when I guess they were all together for a family event and Chris and Shanann and them had, had traveled for out of town and Chris's sister had a little, has a little boy who was three years old who really, really, really loved his uncle Chris and wanted to be around his uncle Chris. And so every morning, the first thing he would do is wake up the little boy would and run to his uncle Chris's door where Shanann and Chris were sleeping and knock on the door and wake them. Them up. Well, I guess after a couple days, Shanann got upset about it and told Chris to go talk to his mom and his sister and them and say, hey, tell the little boy quit waking us up. This is our vacation too and I want to sleep in. And that really rubbed his mama, Cindy, wrong. Now, I can see both sides of that coin. One, me, it's a little boy. He's three years old. He's super excited. He wants to see his uncle. Like, I get that. The other token, I see that maybe, you know, one, two, three days is fine. But after that, can you keep him so I can sleep in a little bit and then Uncle Chris can spend the whole entire day with him? Cindy really was bothered by that. But I, I guess I can see both sides of it, you know? Like, she, she, it is her vacation, too. Maybe she did want to sleep in a little bit. Maybe he could spend the rest of the day you know Chris came to Cindy and said something and you know Cindy held a grudge or whatever against Shanann about it like what's the big deal if she wants to sleep in also what's the big deal if the little boy you know you never get to see him and you're out of town you're on vacation and, and your nephew wants to come and knock on your door so I don't know I guess I see both sides of the coin of that did you guys hear about that if you did let me know what y'all think about that one she also talked about Shanann's illnesses and she also was basically more or less saying that Shanann diagnosed or had her children diagnosed or whatever this is all alleged this is all in my own words her children with all of these issues, asthma and different stuff, and was giving them Tylenol every single night and giving them all of these different medications. And she did not believe that her granddaughters had these illnesses. She believed that Shanann was just doing this and it really bothered her. I don't know. I, I don't know if that's true or not, but I thought that that was really weird, whether it is true or not. Like, you can just tell. Cindy constantly tried to remind people in the book that she wanted to welcome Shanann with open arms and all of this, but it really doesn't sound like it. It sounds from the very beginning to me that Cindy did not like Shanann for whatever reason. 
And I just can't help but to wonder if it's a classic old case of nobody's good enough for my baby boy. You know what I mean? So I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? She's still almost in her tone, allegedly for entertainment purposes only, almost still kind of blames Shanann for Chris murdering Shanann. Listen, people are unhealthy in their marriages every day, okay? There are so many unhappy people. I think the divorce rate, last time I checked, was like 50% or almost 50%, which is like literally almost half of the population gets divorced. You know, people, but people don't just kill their wives and their children. You cannot, it doesn't matter what Shanann was doing unless she was like literally had him locked into, you know, locked him in the closet, was beating him or whatever, and he felt like he had to get away. Like, it, you know, all of these reasons or things or the high maintenance that she basically referred to Shanann as, or more or less in better words, called her, you know, called her basically insinuating that she was very vain and, you know, materialistic and all of it. Even all of that is not reason to kill somebody. So I, I just, I think Cindy really needs to get some therapy. She really needs to get some help. And I feel bad for her in the, in the fact of like, she lost her grandchildren and her daughter-in-law, whether she cared for her or not, you know, her, her life was valuable and her son. Um, and she also said she was hurt that to find out that she felt like her and Chris always had an amazing relationship. And then once he got arrested and started doing interviews, that's when she heard from Chris that maybe their relationship wasn't so good the whole time. So I think she needs to do some soul searching. You know, I really do. There's nothing wrong with going to therapy. There's nothing wrong with getting help. I've done it many times. I'll do it again if I need to. Like there is nothing wrong with wanting to be a better person and thinking like a better person and, and having to sort out things and deal with things. So I don't know if she's in therapy or not, but I really hope that she gets in it and can heal from all of this because it's just a lot. I cannot imagine what they've gone through. All right, my loves, y'all let me know what y'all think about this whole thing. Have you read the book? What do you think about my opinions? What do you think about Cindy Watts? What do you think about Cindy Watts, Shanann's relationship? I know a lot of you guys know a lot about this stuff, so I would really love to hear what y'all have to say. If you guys have any requests for other video topics or anything like that, let me know down below. Other than that, <laughs> please, please don't forget to like this video. It's a free way that you can help your girl out. And until next time, I love you guys so, so, so very much. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.